Bishop E. Earl Jenkins, and I personally would like to invite you to be part of this life-changing encounter whereby you can bear witness that God's love, yes, is real. Welcome to True Love Center, where God's love is truly the center of attraction. True Love Center, formerly known as True Servant Church, has been in existence for over 20 years. Throughout its tenure, we have experienced phenomenal growth in the lives of our members. We believe in a spirit of excellence that transcends into our worship experience 
uh, youth ministry, outreach, musical production, and other ancillary ministries. Come be a part of a life-changing experience here at True Love Center, located at 2630 South Broad Street, Hamilton, New Jersey, or log on to truelovecenter.net at 10 a.m. every Sunday and witness a powerful message. Whether you're near or far, you can be part of this assembly by either meeting us here on location or just tapping the e-member button and become an online member and someone will contact you immediately. Bless the Lord, everybody. We give God praise in the house. God is awesome. He's good. We say blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Simply just another day that God has allowed us to be together as a family. Listen, we're about to get into the praise and worship of this service. We welcome you to True Love Center here today. Those of you who are online, all of you who are online, we thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, gather your family, gather your children, gather your loved ones. We're just going to worship God with a little bit of worship this morning. Listen, don't be ashamed to lift his name. He's been good to you in this crazy pandemic. God has covered us. He's kept us. So the least that we can do is give him worship and give him praise. So right where you are in front of your device, whether it's your phone, whether it's your laptop, whether it's your anything that you have, let's turn that into an altar. I'm here with you. You're here with me. And let's just worship God together. So as we worship God, there's a little song that says, Lord, I love you. How I love you. More and more each day. Now I just want to be close, close to you. Sure, I 
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing. Just, Just to be close to you. Come on, everybody, help us. Here's my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Come on. Just to be close to you. Here's my desire. Come on, just to be close. Just to be close. Hey, come on, say, just to be close. That's my desire. Say, just to be close. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close. Just to be close to you. Just to be close. Come on, while you're in your homes and when we're worshiping, before a lady comes, where you are. We say blessed to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. It's so good to be here. It's so good to have you tuned in with us. The beginning of the year of 2020, I had a vision for me. And that vision for me was to work on me. It wasn't a selfish act. It was a giving act. Because the better I am for me, the better I am for my family, the better I am for my church, the better I am for my community. So when all this, this pandemic happened, I kind of got a little distracted. And lately I've been going through my community and walking and letting the Lord speak to me. And what he said was, don't be distracted. The very thing that I promised you it shall surely come to pass. So what I'm saying to the believers is this. All this is just a distraction. And all of a sudden now we got to watch out for these murderous bees. It's just a distraction. 2020 is still your season. Bishop preached a sermon many years ago about refocusing. This is our time as believers to just refocus on what God promised. He's not a man that he should lie. So whatever it is that he promised you while we're in quarantine, you work on you. Because when we come out, we will come out with our hands up. We will come out blowing our harps. We will come out playing our tambourines. Refocus on you. That which God has promised you shall surely come to pass. At this time, I want you to listen as Sister Pam comes with our announcement. God bless. Good morning. These are your True Love Center announcements. Please join us every Monday through Friday for our morning glory prayer from 625 a.m. until 7 a.m. You can join by dialing 712 Four three two zero zero seven five, and when prompted, enter the code two zero zero nine five nine pound. You are invited to join Bishop E. Earl Jenkins this Sunday at ten a.m. for his Crisis series. You can tune in to this live online Sunday service at www.truelovecenter.net or on Earl Jenkins' Facebook page. It's a series you don't want to miss. And every Thursday evening at 7.45 p.m., 
You can join Bishop Jenkins for his open face Bible teaching. It's live on his Facebook page, or you can dial 712-432-0075 and enter the code 200959-POUND. We encourage you to subscribe to Bishop Jenkins' YouTube page under E. Earl Jenkins to watch his previous videos. Kids Church is live on Zoom on Saturdays at 1 p.m. for ages 5 to 13. For more information, you can email Elder Tanya Toll at tull95 at gmail.com. And Sunday School is now available on Sundays from 8.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Simply dial 712-432-0075 and enter the code 200959-POUND to join us for Sunday School. During this COVID pandemic, we are asking that you would take the time while at home to prepare family support kits. Your kit could include pulling together important documents and sharing them with one another. You can create a list of available caregivers. You can also share your family plan openly with one another. And it's also very important to pack an age appropriate go bag for each member of your family. Now here are a few important 2020 primary election dates. The deadline to change your party affiliation is May 13th. June 16th is the deadline to register to vote in the primary election. June 30th is the deadline to apply to receive a mail-in ballot by mail. And July 6th is the deadline to receive a mail-in ballot in person. July 17th is the new primary election day. We truly thank you for tuning in every week. And if you would like to be a blessing and would like to give toward our ministry, here are the ways you're able to do so. You can send in your tithe by mailing it to True Love Center, 2630 South Broad Street, Hamilton, New Jersey, 08610. Or you can drop off your tithe or seat offering every Sunday at the church between the hours of 11 a.m. and 1230 p.m. You can use the cash app, dollar sign True Love Center, or the Givelify app. And you can also give on our website at www.truelovecenter.net. Again, we truly thank you for tuning in on today. And we pray that God will continue to bless and cover you and your family. Now, here's Bishop Jenkins to bring us an anointed word. May God bless you. Bless, 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 bless be the name of our Lord. We said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly we are honored to be here on this Lord's wonderful, wonderful day. I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing even during this time. We are still blessed. We're highly favored. We're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. We are highly favored of the Lord. And so we thank God for all of you. I particularly want to thank True Love Center and all of you who support this ministry. Thank you so much. We're able to do what we do here at the church because of your great support. Amen. You're tithing, you're giving your offerings that help us facilitate the needs of our church and our communities. Amen. We still have children are graduating. We still support our St. Jude's Hospital campaign. We are feeding the hungry, which you're going to see later on in the, minute, uh, in the message. We're still doing what we are called to do. I am so thrilled and excited to do know that I'm up praying for you. We are still working. Amen. Thank God for this production team that's here. And I particularly would like to thank God for Elder Jenkins for doing such a wonderful job with our praise and worship. It's added to our ministry here on Sundays now. So you're going to get this every single Sunday. Thank God for the musicians that were able to come in today. Uh, Brother Phil and Brian, God bless you. I don't know. I'm going to get a little hoop here today. Amen. And pop! Papa's in the house, amen, and they all quarantined, amen. They separated, got the mask on, so we're taking care of what needs to be taken care of. But we're just so excited, True Love Center, we're almost there, amen. But we thank God for all of you that are here 
today. We honor your presence today. There is a word from the Lord that we want to share with you, and I also want to encourage you to please uh, subscribe onto E. Earl Jenkins' YouTube channel. That way, that way you will get all the messages, all the different things that we're going to be doing in ministry, and you will stay abreast, amen, and continue to support what we do here at the church. Amen? Let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Matthew, Matthew, I just want to encourage all of you who are going through something right now, do know that this season will pass. This too will pass. We are coming out. But when you come out, keep your mask on, keep your gloves on, and wash your hands. All right? So let's make sure we are doing those things that are necessary to make sure we help God do what he's called us to do. Amen. He wants us to be healthy. Let's help God. Faith without works is dead. Faith in God healing your body and you're not washing your hands ain't no good. Wash your hands. Tag somebody say, wash your hands. All right? And if you're in agreement with anything that's been said today, I need your hearts, I need your thumbs up, and more importantly, I need your remarks. Amen? Make your remarks. That's your saying to us. Preach! The Lord is speaking. Amen? So encourage us as we continue to teach and preach the word of the Lord. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Matthew, the ninth chapter, and the 35th verse. Amen? Matthew 9th chapter, the 35th verse, down through the 38th verse. Amen. We're praying for you, and we're going to certainly pray for you when the message is done today. Amen. 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 And Jesus went out all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness as every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. That's that mercy. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted hmm, and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, wow, he said this to the church, the harvest is truly plenteous. The harvest is ripe in one translation. But the laborers are few. The harvest truly is ripe. This, this time in which we live is right. It's the right time. It's ripe. It's plenteous. It's, it's the right time to really penetrate the heart of the people, to really penetrate the minds of people. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers. It's ironic that Jesus is talking to the church. The disciples are saying, I see there's a need, but the laborers are few. Does that mean the preacher, the one who heralds a message? No, that means everybody. I, I need everybody who considers themselves to be the body of Christ, a part of the body, laborers. I need you to get working. He says, 38, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers unto his harvest. I want to talk to you on the subject essential workers. We talked on first responders on last week, but today we want to talk about essential workers. And I want to walk through this. Amen. And I want to be very specific because God gave me something in my heart that I believe is going to bless you if you allow this word to penetrate your spirit. Essential worker. Tap that. Essential worker. Essential worker. The term essential is defined as a valuable commodity. It is of importance, a valuable commodity, meaning of importance. It is unfortunate in today's society, my sisters and brothers, that value only equates to money. Uh, money has become the barometer that defines the prowess of one's status. If you have money, you have status. If you have no money, you have no status. I've watched people who were completely ignored until they came into some money. And then I watched those who came into some money start neglecting those who once helped them when they didn't have any money. <laughs> Y'all gonna get that in a minute. While money 
answers all things, the love of it is the root of all evil when you allow it to determine one's value. And here's the truth, my sisters and brothers. All of our value stems from the same compound of dust from the earth. Talk to me, Bishop. Which makes, watch this, no one better than the other, regardless of your title or your position. Hear me. We all cost the same and were bought with a price which makes us all essential because of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to tap somebody in TG. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the shedding of blood. Thank God for the broken body. Thank God for Jesus. When I look at this value and I look at us as it relates to value, I did some research on the flesh and its value. Stay here with me. I, 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 I did something. I did some, some research on this, and I found out that, watch this, y'all, a human body, after cremation, weighs about four pounds. Four pounds of dirt, which costs about $2 on sale. Now, this includes bone brittle, which makes up about 12% of the dirt. 12% of $2 is about 24 cents, and a fraction of that is dust in which we're created out of, which equates to about two cents. <laughs> two cents. So in essence, my sisters and brothers, ontologically, the flesh is only worth about two, <laughs> two cents. We dress it, we fight against it, we try to outdo each other with it, but it's only worth two cents to the point that when the spirit leaves the flesh, it goes back to dust, back to dirt that's worth two, somebody tap, two cents. So although the flesh is worth two cents, the value within the flesh it's what God deems to be essential. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. Let's look at this very quickly. Listen to what it says. It says, but we have, watch this, this treasure of God in this earthen two-cent vessel that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, not of ourselves. Verse 6, watch this, we're about to verse 8. He says, we're troubled on every side, yet not in distress. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. In other words, watch this, y'all. Every single morning, I allow you to bounce back, to get up with new mercies, not because of you, but because of what's inside of you. And what's inside of you is the essential that I need because that which is inside of you represents me and my purpose for creating you to be in the earth. I know you're not perfect. I know this. But what are your intentions? Oh, somebody going to help me this morning. You have something greater in you than that's what's in the world. What you have inside of you can impact the world. You need to tap somebody and say, I'm essential. I'm an essential worker of God. All of us are essential to God. Hear me. Regardless of your title or your disposition, the Bible says in our text, the harvest is right. The harvest is right. But the laborers are few. My harvest is ripe. The world is ready to receive a word. The world is ready. Your community is ready. Your family is ready. Your job is ready. People on that job is ready. Everybody in the world is ready. When you turn on the news, people are kneeling in the street with their hands lifted up towards heaven that would not normally do that had not it gone through what we're going through. The world 
is ready to hear from God's people who have been prepared for this. All these years, 38 years going to church, now it's time to step out uh, and do what God called us to do. We all are essential workers. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. I, I wonder why. I mean, after all the shouting and all, after all the dancing and all, after all the worshiping, yeah, I wonder why the laborers are few. Is it because you can't do it? Or is it because you don't think you're qualified to do it? Oh, we think the word comes from the preacher. We think the word comes from the pulpit. We think the word comes in the church. Ah. Uh, but wherever you go, that's where the church is. Uh, the harvest is ripe, but I need some laborers who understand that they are essential. Uh, I wonder why we don't get on board here with what God wants to do. Hmm. Maybe because Jesus gives the parable over Matthew 25 about uh, the five talents and the two talents and the one talent the personalities of those who have gifts to uh, display and God wants us to display those gifts while we're here because one day he's going to come back and we have to get an account for what we've done and so perhaps uh, the mentality is well uh, the one with the five talents you know uh, he got that thing going on he has more than me and, and the one with the two talents uh, he, he's pretty gifted and he can preach he can teach uh, the one with the five talents really I mean that's the doctors and the lawyers and, 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 and those are the people that got the degrees and yeah the, the, the nurses during this pandemic yeah th those are the people that, that are really the responders are the real you know those, those are the ones that, 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 that got the five talents that are so critical that, that, that are important to, but, but the one with the two talents said you know what I'm going to invest in mine because at least I got two uh, yeah, so I'm important just as much as the five, but the one that got the one says, well, perhaps I only got one little talent. I only got one little thing to offer. Minds cannot be as significant as those who are considered to be uh, first responders. Those are the, the ones with the degrees. I I mean, I don't have a degree. All I have is some experience and, and some skills that my under, uneducated daddy taught me how to do before he passed on. So I don't have a degree. I only went to ninth grade. I only went to fourth grade. All I know how to do is clean bathrooms. All I know how to do is, is, is do what I do, but I'm not essential. Yes, oh man, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know, yeah, I know uh, when, when, when people put out the garbage and if, why during this, during this pandemic, if the garbage aren't picked up, you know, during this time and wait until the pandemic is over, we'll have a yeah, streets filled with garbage. So uh, even though I don't have a degree and I'm considered to be essential because I'm a garbage, well, a sanitation engineer, that sounds better. I still don't qualify to be considered essential or first responder because I'm just a garbage man. I'm just a, a waitress. I'm just somebody that's important but not as important. Ooh, perhaps you think because I'm just an usher, or I'm just a trustee, I'm just a deacon. I don't preach like so and so. I don't. I don't teach like so and so. I don't. I don't have that anointing. I can't talk like so and so. I'm just a worker in the church, but I'm not a leader. I don't have a title. I just come to church, and that's all I do is come to church. And when I got home, I'm a leader in my house, but I don't have a title. I'm mama. I'm daddy. I'm sister, I'm brother, but I don't have a word because God only uses preachers. Hmm. Perhaps you think because you got one, you think because you're not plausibly as significant as others with degrees, you're not worthy to be called an essential worker. But uh, the last thing, last time I checked the definition of essential worker or essential, it means valuable commodity of importance. It has nothing to do with title or position, but, but the need. Hear me, everybody 
It's needed when it comes down to keeping this world or the church functioning. Everybody, okay, 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 Bishop, break it down. Well, 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 if the doctor with the degrees, if the nurses with the degrees, hear me, ah, ah, it's going to work on a patient that comes in the emergency room. Guess what? A driver who may not have the degree got to drive them there. Mm. And before they get there, the room that they're going to take the patient to, that the doctor got to work on, that the nurse got the nurse, yeah, has to be cleaned <laughs> by a janitor. Mm. Oh, I'm talking about essential workers. And when these professional people have done their job, somebody got to dump the trash. Uh, uh, a dump. Oh, y'all going to help me. Everybody is essential when the job has to get done. Everybody. I can't say to the ushers that they're not needed. Not when 1 Corinthians 12, 21 says these words. It says that I can't say to the body, I don't need you, nor can he, the head, say to the feet, I don't need you. Y'all listen to this. We're all filthy, uh, uh, fitly joined together. I can't say to the usher, I don't need you, when the body of Christ represents the culture of God. The body of Christ represents who God is as one we're connected as a body to carry out God's vision because Proverbs 9, or rather 29 and 18 says, where there's no vision, the people perish. Hear me? If the people don't understand who they are in God, if the people don't understand the vision that God has for them, if the people to understand regardless of where they are they're still essential in the sight of God if the people don't have vision of who God says they are they will die right where they are you need to understand this my sisters and brothers where there is no vision if people don't see where they need to go they'll end up nowhere and it's our job hear me to come in a place like this or even online to discuss God's vision and then carry it out because vision goes beyond church walls. Don't get that mixed up with the building being a vision. It is a corporate vision, but in order for a building to be built, people that build the building must see that vision first before they oh, involve a corporate vision. They need to be inspired. Are you with me? Vision goes beyond church walls. Write this down. Church, hear me, starts when service is over. <laughs> That's good. Church doesn't start when you come to the building. Church starts after you get information to take out of the building. Mm -hmm. Church starts when service is over. And our job as essential workers of God is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the love of God. Tap somebody and say, I am qualified to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am qualified because I got a testimony. I am qualified because when I think oh, oh, on the goodness of Jesus, I got something to say. I am qualified to talk about his goodness. You may not be able to preach like Paul, or sing like David, but everybody is essential, regardless of your title or position. Listen to me. Tap this. Tap somebody and say, your two cents matters. Your two cents matters. It's like the woman who gave the two mites. She put her mites in the basket where Jesus was. And then you had those who had much more to give than her. And they had quantity. But Jesus told them as they stood there, what she gave is more than what you gave. Because although you gave in quantity, she gave with intentionality. She gave with everything she had. She didn't give out of her, 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 her abundance. She gave out of her lack. Are you listening to me? You need to understand, my sisters and brothers. Hear me well. Value supersedes quantity. 
put that on the screen. Value supersedes quantity. You can do a whole lot of nothing if it lacks character, the character that represents the love of God. And that's what this is about. I'm not. That's what this is about, my sisters and brothers. Not just being an essential worker, but a worker with intentionality. A worker that understands that regardless of where you've been, what you've been through, where you are, God created you with his image after his likeness to fulfill destiny in the earth. In times like this, as we know, love shows up when things get hot. Now that things are hot, it's time for you to understand that this is when God wants to use you and use you the most. Listen to what he says. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are fruit. Church, hear me when I tell you, God is in need of you. I want you to hear me. God is in need of you. Not when this pandemic is over. Because people are dying now. Not when you get yourself together. Because you, you'll never do that. God is in need of you. you you'll never get because your, your flesh is just two cents. They don't have any value. It, it, I'll leave that alone. But, but God, what's inside of you, God wants to use uh, to, 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 to encourage other people. And he needs you now. God, God needs you. He needs you. I'm reminded of Jerusalem as with the world of, or our community today was in need of a savior. And like Jesus who rode in Jerusalem on a donkey. But in order for him to make an impact, he had to get off the donkey and go to work. But prior to getting off the donkey, he sent the disciples into town to get the donkey in order for them to get the donkey, they had to untie the donkey. They had to untie the donkey. They had to untie the donkey. The problem is some of us are still tied to our donkeys thinking that we can't be used by God. Continue to use our excuses as to why we can't be used by God. But Jesus told the disciples that if anybody asks you what's going on, Tell them I am in need of this donkey. Church, I'm here to tell you that God is in need of you. Are oh, you listening to me? And you, he needs you, and not only need you to untie yourself, but to get off your donkey and go to work. To understand that I no longer need to use this as an excuse. We all have done something. We all have our regrets. But I hear the Lord saying today, my sisters and brothers, get up off your donkey. Stop making those excuses. Because somebody needs to hear your testimony. Come on, help me. Somebody needs to know that there's a way out. Somebody needs to know, give me that, that there's a bomb in Gilead. Somebody needs to know that God loves them. Somebody needs to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came all the way from glory. Roamed this earth for 33 long years. Wounded for our transgression. Somebody needs to know he was bruised for our iniquity. Carried the chastisement of peace upon his shoulder. And with his stripes we are healed today. Marched up the gospel hill. Got up on the cross. God went down in the grave. Rose from the grave with all power in his hand. Up took the sting out of death. The victory at the grave. And he now lives. And he lives in you. And he's challenging you today. To go spread the gospel. That I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm still a healer. I'm still a deliverer. I'm still hope. I'm still a mind regulator, a heart fixer. I'm the rose of Sharon, the lily in the valley. Whatever you need, I'm the palm on the tree. But somebody, 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 some 
essential worker that understands I'm no longer that donkey. But I have purpose. I'm essential to God. Whether you believe it or not, I'm essential to God. I'm important to him. And that's the reason why he woke me up this morning. And that's the reason why I keep bouncing back from things that should have killed me because God is not through with me. If you're on this line, if you're watching me right now, that means you are an essential worker and God wants you, hear me, to get off your donkey and go to work. He wants you to understand that your two sit matters. He wants you to understand that you are essential. You don't need no degree. You got the spirit of the Lord. You got love and that's all the degrees you need. I thank God for us all here today. I want to pray very quickly. I want to pray for those of you who may not understand what it is to understand who you are in God. And by accepting Jesus Christ in your heart, that ignites the spirit of God that's already in you to finish the work that God begun in you. Some of you are great people that can help so many people. Now listen, your world may be your family. Your world may be your community. Whatever that world is, God has called you to that world. That your world may be your only son. I don't know. Your only daughter. I don't know. But God called you to make an impact in somebody's life. He's called you to make an impact in somebody's life. Elijah saved the whole nation, but ended up giving Elijah the devil portion of his anointing. He was called to one man when it's all said and done. Who are you called to? You are an essential worker, but who spread the gospel? I want to pray with you that you understand your importance of being alive. God, I thank you for these who are on this line. I thank you for those who are tapping into your anointing now. God, I thank you for that young woman now who is crying right where she sits. You're crying out of regret, but God says you're, you've been forgiven. Move on. I pray for that young man, God, who's asking that question now. Who's asking that question. And God has given you that answer. And that is get up and finish. Are you here? In the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you would touch the hearts of those that are seeking sanctuary now. Touch their minds. Touch their spirits. That will get up now, God, and say, Lord, I'm ready. I've, I've done enough. I'm, I'm ready now. You spared me. You brought me through so much. You, I you should have killed me, God. You spared my life. And now I'm ready. After hearing this word, I understand that I'm more than my experience. My experience was to become a testimony, to tell somebody that there's no secret to what you can do. What you did for me, you can do the same thing for them. I'm ready, God. But I need you to ignite that spirit in me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me. Change me. Make me better in the name of Jesus. And I received your son. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose from the dead and now has all power in his hand. God, I accept you into my heart. Say that with me. God, I accept you in my heart. I accept you in my heart. I accept you in my heart. If you're saying this and you mean it and you confess what we just said, God has ignited in you the spirit that you need that's going to better your life. And listen to this. If you're not part of a church, please continue to log on to our service, truelovecenter.net, and be a part of us. We're on every Thursday night at 7.45 and every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We want to now feed your spirit now that you've accepted Christ. And thank God for your salvation. Come on, let's give God a praise for those that made that connection now. We're going to ask you to hit the e-member button on, on our website. That way our ministers can reach out to you and give you some more instructions. Amen. But we're thank you, we're thankful, and we're grateful for all of you. Again, I want to thank our leaders, our people of God, who have labored our outreach ministry, our reach out ministry, who have labored these last few weeks to make sure that we were able to do our giveaway on yesterday. On yesterday, it was a powerful move. We had some people come through. We had some people who were who were dealing with some issues to come through. And they came through. And we were able to bless them with food and, and masks. We were able to bless them with a lot of things because of your giving, because of your anointing, because 
of what God gave you and what he put on your heart. Families, workers, people who you thought would never have come in a line now are coming in line and not ashamed to get what's necessary because this world is in a dolorous situation. But as we deal with this luxurious environment, as we deal with this diabolical time, God is still on the throne. God is still blessing. God is still heaven. God is still reunited. God is still joining. God is still using us to make a difference in the community. And I want to thank those who brought in that robbery to help those who are in need. We thank them. We bless them. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Come on. charging and people are still needing help to educate their children and so we want to make sure we do our part. We want to continue to feed as we've done this past weekend on a regular basis but we need you to support us. We need you to support the church. We need you to support in your giving. That's the only way we're able to do this so please remember, please sir, if you don't mind if we could just sow a special seed today to help us in doing such. Amen. Give Lify or you can do uh, uh, um, uh, our website, web, uh, true service, truelovecenter.net, or we can do dollar sign true love center and allow God to use your heart. Whatever the Lord has purpose in your heart, amen. This is a special offering for our need in our community and those that are in need, okay? God bless you. I love y'all so much. Thank you for all you that you do, amen. Again, thank God for our praise and worship. Thank God for our experience. Again, thank God for all of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's y'all enjoy this weekend. Be safe. And I'll see you on Thursday. Please do me one favor. Before you log in on Thursday, listen to the prayer on E. Earl Jenkins' YouTube channel entitled, I'm Just Saying. I want you to listen to that prayer because that's what we're teaching on. And thank you for the comments that I received, inbox comments that I received concerning true faith. People were like, oh, my God, I didn't see faith from that perspective. But it's the truth. And that's what we're talking about. I spoke that prayer out of my heart. Questions that people are scared to ask God. And they have not because they asked not. So I want to, on behalf of us, stand proxy before God on our behalf. So listen to that prayer and then chime in on Thursday at 745 so you can be taught, amen, what that prayer meant through the scriptures. Amen. God bless you. You have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And we'll see you 
on Thursday. Again, subscribe to E.R. Jenkins, amen, on YouTube. God bless. Have a wonderful day.